good evening and welcome to episode 23, I think, of Fracking Nightmare. Where have the past six months gone? Seems to pass in the blink of an eye. Well, we've taken a three week break and a lot has occurred in that three weeks. Tonight's show is not actually live, it's recorded on the afternoon of Thursday, uh, 24th of April, as uh, I have an event. I will be speaking on, um, uh, on the 28th, Monday 28th, at St Anne's in Blackpool. So if you're watching this show, you're obviously not at St Anne's, or of course you might be watching it on YouTube and have already been to St Anne's. Well, thank you for joining us. We are hot from Barton Moss. I literally left Barton Moss uh, late last night, having uh, seen the camp literally uh, close down for the summer months. So I'm gonna show you some photographs of that a little bit later. And at the end of the show, I'm gonna run the full 30 minutes of the final walkout of the convoy, which occurred last Monday. Because I think this is very telling and, and the star of this walkout is a local, an Earlham resident by the name of Kevin Dunn, who by his own admission, knew next to nothing about hydraulic fracturing prior to the arrival of the Barton Moss camp. But over the last few months, he has made an effort to educate himself and has become a regular participant in the Barton Moss community protection camp, walking the convoys in and out at every possible opportunity, accompanied on many occasions by his wife and his son. And I think you'll see that the spirit of this man will not be broken regardless of the intimidation that is uh, pra practiced by the Greater Manchester Police. So I'm going to start because to this morning, Thursday, the 24th of April, I couldn't help but uh, catch an article in the Daily Mail. This is an article, it's uh, right at the front of the paper, ostensibly page six, if we can bring this up on the screen here. This is the uh, headline, Tories will end the scourge of onshore wind farms. Here's the article, it was a, a full page article. And within that article, there is uh, um, a subsection there, how the Conservatives have blown hot and cold on wind farms. Well, I just want to identify a couple of uh, points here. This is the classic statement by Cameron in the run-up to the election. He said, I want us to be the greenest government ever. A very simple ambition and one that I'm absolutely committed to achieving. Well, in reality, of course, we know very well that uh, the way in which you tell when a politician is lying is that their lips move. And uh, that might explain why it is that David Cameron has been trying to practice speaking without his lips moving. Well, Cameron said, says uh, more recently, he says, we can no longer have wind turbines imposed on communities. I can't single-handedly build a new Jerusalem. More of that, perhaps another time. But I can protect our green and pleasant land. Well, so much for Cameron's protection of the green and pleasant land, as, of course, he champions the onslaught of this country via an industry that is about to unleash an abomination known as hydraulic fracturing. So Cameron is very happy to shut down the wind farms and solar farms that are springing up around the country and push the hydraulic fracturing agenda. Now, the reason that this article caught my eye when I, I hate to admit, bought the uh, Daily Mail was because I'd already seen an online article on the Daily Mail's um, website. And uh, this is very different. It says here, family awarded $3 million after court finds chemical exposure from fracking on land next to their home left them sick and suffering horror side effects. Now, this is not the first time that the Daily Mail has published what is ostensibly a fracking awareness article on its website, yet failed to get those articles into the printed version. So this is apparently what passes as a balanced journalism. 
to put the government agenda into the printed version and then put anything that actually doesn't support the government agenda onto the online version, where, of course, it is seen by a lot less people. But let's take a closer look at this article. This is a story that most of us in the anti-fracking community became aware of a few days ago. So it says the Parr family, this is taken directly from the Daily Mail website. The Parr family of Decatur, Texas, first complained of falling ill in 2008 after Aruba Petroleum began fracking operations near to their ranch. Bob and Lisa Parr and their daughter Emma developed nosebleeds, nausea, rashes and asthma. And for those of you who have watched previous episodes of Fracking Nightmare, you'll be aware that this is consistent with the symptoms discussed by Brian Monk in episodes two and in episodes 18. Brian Monk, of course, being the Queensland farmer whose uh, livelihood and has been decimated by the gas industry in southern Queensland. The uh, headlines continue. Some of their livestock were born with deformities after the Pars land was contaminated. Now, this again is consistent with the report that was uh, published by um, Professor Robert Oswald of Cornell University. And I, I discussed that uh, report on a previous episode of Fracking Nightmare. Robert Oswald wrote an open letter to David Cameron last September. Encourage him to exercise caution and, and avoid rushing into an industry where the negative impacts were irrefutable across various locations in the US. The PARS launched a lawsuit against the energy firm, which went to trial. The jury sided with the PAR family, a first in fracking lawsuits in the US. Well, I'm not sure that it is actually a first, but if it is the first, it, it's certainly you know, right there in probably single figures. The reason being is because the industry does everything it possibly can to avoid these cases coming to court. Generally, the industry will bribe the families into submission, offering them basically whatever compensation they think appropriate to just shut up. Or as we've seen on a previous edition of Fracking Nightmare, they'll offer them a pizza voucher, which, of course, under Pennsylvania law, if the pizza voucher is then cashed in for a pizza, that effectively waives all further liability of the company because they can demonstrate that the claimant accepted their offer of compensation, a pizza. Well, here's a picture of the, uh, the family. This is um, um, Bob and Lisa and their daughter, Emma. And in the body of the article, it says, a Texas family have won nearly three million in a judgment against an oil giant after claiming that fr fracking operations near their 40-acre ranch uh, that's a back garden by the uh, Texan scale, left them suffering severe health side effects. In what is believed to be the first successful legal action against a shale operator, Bob and Lisa Parr sued Aruba Petroleum for damages for a raft of illness they and their daughter Emma have suffered for almost six years. <clears throat> they convinced the jury that the company's hydraulic fracturing operations had contaminated their water and land in Decatur, leaving them suffering nosebleeds, nausea, and rashes. Now, this was actually reported on um, Fox News in the US. Uh, here we go, the screenshot, $3 million fracking verdict. And uh, sorry for those who are faint of heart, but a, a more graphic picture of uh, Bob Parr apparently suffering from one of the nosebleeds caused by the close proximity of the, gassing, uh, the gas industry. Now, this really is remarkable because it occurred in Texas, which is the uh, obviously the um, uh, home of the oil industry, Dallas and Houston being cities that have effectively been established on the back of the oil industry. But the reality is that it is becoming increasingly apparent in these states that hydraulic fracturing does not work the same as conventional drilling. And more and more people are starting to recognize that this has an enormous negative impact, 
both in terms of the contamination and in terms of negative health impacts, which is why the twin cities of Dallas and Fort Worth have banned hydraulic fracturing within the city limits. The same is now true for Los Angeles. So with these cities recognizing that this is not something that they should be unleashing beneath their citizens, perhaps it's time that the wider community actually uh, woke up to this. Meanwhile, on the iGas stock forum, uh, whenever I post any uh, link to any such uh, negative uh, event related to hydraulic fracturing, it's always met, of course, with the appropriate sociopathic derision. And after one particular link that I would posted, one investor in iogas stock posted, well, until such time as the water is contaminated and thousands of people have been killed, invest, invest, invest. Well, we unfortunately have to acknowledge that uh, there are an enormous number of socio-psychopaths who are participating either directly or indirectly in this industry. But uh, there are ultimately way more people who have the appropriate level of common sense that can be applied to bring about the shutting down of this industry. In the UK, the battle continues. We are still ostensibly a frack-free nation, a frack-free country, a country that has only had one well fractured using the process of high volume, high pressure hydraulic fracturing, and that was the exploratory well drilled by Quadrilla in, in uh, Priest Hall on the Fylde Peninsula. Of course, last summer, we had the Balkan blockade, a 66-day campaign uh, to attempt to prevent Quadrilla from fracking at Balkan. Well, that campaign was successful, not least thanks to the Reclaim Your Power camp coming down to Balkan over uh, a weekend, which led the police to effectively advise Quadrilla that they should shut down operations for six days. That six-day delay effectively meant that Quadrilla ran out of time before their planning permission expired on September the 28th. But as I speak, Quadrilla have submitted another planning application to return to Balkan to run an acid frack or an acid etch. Either way, it's a frack. Their proposition is to pump 10,000 gallons of hydrochloric acid, they claim, which will be diluted to the rate of 10 to 1. But to run this acid frack at Balkan, and the uh, planning officer of the West Sussex County Council has recommended that the planning committee of West Sussex County Council approve this application. You can find this application online or by going to frackingnightmare.com, where you can download the, uh, the document there and peruse it at your leisure. In this document, the planning officer makes the statement that the planning application should be approved, but he continues, uh, constantly says, assuming, assuming that Quadrilla uphold their obligations, assuming that the Environment Agency monitors the operation, assuming that the Health and Safety Executive does what it's supposed to do. So many assumptions. Well, that's exactly what has occurred in the US, in Canada, in Australia, all making assumptions, but in every case, the industry effectively not doing what it claims it can do, and the contamination being self-evident. So after Balkan, there is now obviously a hiatus in the south of England, but uh, the planning application, I believe, is going to be heard at the offices of West Sussex County Council on April 29th. So I think this is a call out for people, which will be the day after this show goes out live, Tuesday the 29th of April, a call out to uh, participate in that meeting. No doubt West Sussex County Council will choose the smallest room in their offices, preventing people from actually uh, contributing to the proceedings. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the UK, um, at uh, Danes Hill in Nottinghamshire. Here's a, a picture that you will not have seen in the mainstream media. This is a, a young man by the name of Will, who on uh, Monday of last week scaled the rig 
at uh, Danes Hill. Now, just to put this in perspective, I mean, this is a zoomed-in picture of Will sitting at the top of the rig, but uh, here it is. Sitting on top of a, I think it's about 15 meters, that's about 45 feet. So uh, clearly the young man has a, a head for heights. Well, he sat on the top of that rig for nine hours uh, before coming down. And uh, full credit to him for um, lasting nine hours up there in that uh, crow's nest. Well, he was subsequently taken to the uh, local police station where he was ultimately released without charge. Now, I think this is my perspective of what's occurring at, uh, at Danes Hill. Dart Energy are desperate to avoid negative publicity. They are desperate to avoid what's occurring at Danes Hill becoming national news. So despite the fact that there has been a blockade there and the protection community at Danes Hill have been delaying the trucks from entering the camp, basically Dart Energy have requested that there be a minimalistic police presence, certainly not the antagonistic level of police presence that we've witnessed at uh, Barton Moss over the last um, five months or so. So after Will had been arrested, um, I'm sure that the, uh, uh, the charge would have been uh, aggravated trespass, but uh, he was actually released without charge. And of course, this would have been under the instruction of Dart Energy, who would simply have told the police that they had no desire to press charges. So consequently, this event made it into the Retford Times, and the Sheffield Star and uh, BBC Radio Nottingham. But that's it. As far as the rest of the country is concerned, this incident didn't happen. So Dart's a strategy of minimising publicity or negative publicity by effectively working with the protection community, indirectly, of course, but working with the, the protection community to effectively plan around the protection community's desire to delay the trucks. So the Danes Hill operation is, I think, pretty much almost over now. But what this does demonstrate is that um, there's, there's the right to peaceful protest without any shadow of doubt. And that's exactly what has been facilitated at Danes Hill. But it's also worked with dark energy and they have achieved what they set out to achieve. Dark Energy wants to keep itself out of the mainstream media. It's coming to the tail end of um, an inquiry in Scotland where uh, the Dart, en Dart Energy has had to justify its capacity and capability to perform the process of hydraulic fracturing safely. So let's see how this pans out because Dart Energy was almost bankrupt in October of last year and was effectively rescued by a massive cash injection from GDF, which is Gaz de France. So yet again, we have a situation where hydraulic fracturing is banned in France, but now we have two French companies, Total and Gaz de France, effectively buying into the shale gas activities here in the, the UK. So Barton Moss, well, the last um, four and a half months, 149 days, so today is, is effectively day 150 after the uh, first convoy went along Barton Moss Road to the iGas well site. And the last convoy, which you're going to see in the video a little later, the last convoy left on day 140. Now, it was always maintained that the protection community camp that was uh, erected alongside Barton Moss Road, and here's one of the iconic pictures of that camp, and right throughout the winter there, about 300 meters of verge along Barton Moss Road. And you see the, uh, the mosses behind it, this is agricultural land, that's a field of winter wheat you see there in the, the hinterland. Well, I guess, weren't quite so concerned about the, uh, the national uh, publicity. And of course, iGas leaned on Peel Holdings, the iGas landlord, also the landlord of the BBC in Manchester. At, uh, as I've discussed previously, Peel Holdings owning an enormous 
uh, tranche of land right across the whole of the northwest of England, not least following the IGAS licenses along the Manchester Ship Canal and the, the River Mersey. And of course, uh, Peel Holdings attempted to get the camp evicted back in February, but um, that uh, attempt failed. The, the case is still before the Royal Court of Appeal, and in fact, the case is scheduled to be heard in the Royal Court of Appeal on Tuesday, July the 16th. Well, the camp has seen many innovations, and um, I want to uh, actually acknowledge the contribution of everybody who put themselves in front of the, uh, the convoys, whether that was just walking in front of the convoys or whether it was doing something a little bit more dramatic, such as locking on. And here we see one of the uh, lock-ons that occurred during the, uh, the Barton Moss campaign. Now, a number of people have been arrested multiple times. In fact, I think the total number of arrests is about 230, but actually that's about 70 people. So the average number of arrests per person is about three point something. Well, of course, some people have been arrested just once, but others have been arrested multiple times. And one of the individuals who has put himself in the front line, perhaps more than many others, is this gentleman here, uh, known as Kate McCann. And Kate was arrested no less than eight times during the Barton Moss campaign. I believe that five of those arrests were directly associated with Kate locking on. Every time he was arrested, of course, he was given bail conditions by the police, preventing him from returning to Barton Moss. But uh, Kate would get those bail conditions lifted and he would be able to return to Barton Moss. And uh, thanks to the judiciary for upholding the fundamental right to peaceful protest. The emphasis being on the word peaceful. Despite the attempts by the Greater Manchester Police and particularly the TAU, the Tactical Aid Unit, colloquially known as Thugs Are Us, despite their best attempts at intimidation, at no point... During the Barton Moss campaign, did anybody rise to the bait? So Kate, on, after his eighth arrest, uh, was once again uh, released on bail. And at the very end of the campaign, uh, after the last convoy had left, Kate actually returned to camp to uh, pick up his personal effects. Um, but he was uh, caught on one of the CCTV cameras at the end of Barton Moss Road. And when he went to report to the police at Swinton as part of his bail conditions, he was kept in at the police station and effectively remanded. And uh, he was held on remand, is currently on remand. And his case is going to be uh, heard um, at the Manchester courts on the 29th, I believe, which is again tomorrow, if you're watching this program live. So uh, if you're at a loose end tomorrow, or even if you're not at a loose end and you can make it down to the, uh, the magistrate's courts in Manchester, please lend your support to a man who has shown the commitment and conviction of the anti-fracking community. This epitomizes the attitude of those who are committed to ensuring this abomination is not unleashed beneath the population of this country. Uh, last Sunday, there was a vigil outside of uh, Winston Green uh, Prison in Birmingham, and uh, there were a number of people gathered there to let it be known that uh, they were not impressed by Kate being remanded. And uh, he is indeed a political prisoner, and this is the term being used by his solicitors. He is a political prisoner. This is a man who has done nothing more than demonstrate his absolute disgust at an industry that is proven, as we've seen on the Daily Mail's website today, is proven to have caused contamination wherever it's been unleashed around the world. Kate and every other member of the Barton Moss Community Protection Group, which the Manchester Police tell us has numbered some 670 people from the time the campaign started until uh, last Monday, thanks to their um, abilities to uh, log every protector. 
So Kate is one of the 70 odd people that has been arrested and every one, one of those people that has been arrested in pretty much every case it's an unlawful arrest or a wrongful arrest and I for one absolutely salute you you've done an amazing job and in fact you know if it wasn't for you and if it wasn't for the Greater Manchester Police then the Barton Moss Community Protection Camp would not have achieved the outstanding success of raising awareness of this industry right throughout Greater Manchester. At the start of the campaign, the level of awareness of this industry was minimal. Today, the frack-free groups in, in Earlham, in Caddishead, in Chawton, in Walkden, in Tameside, in Bury, in Bolton, and over the next few months, the level of awareness is going to increase dramatically. And if I gas do return, as they are threatening to, in September, then you can absolutely guarantee that the Barton Moss Community Protection Group will reconvene at Barton Moss Road. And it doesn't matter whether Peel Holdings do get an injunction on the verge alongside Barton Moss Road. The creativity of the protection community knows no limits. So I guess, hopefully, by that time, you will uh, adhere to the uh, comments of Andrew Austin, who has uh, stated that uh, to return to Barton Moss would be crazy. We agree. And actually, to return anywhere else in the country would be crazy, because you're going to get a reception committee. So the, the Barton Moss um, community has uh, disbanded, gone their separate ways. Some have uh, had to return to the Matrix. Some have gone to the Danes Hill camp. Others have gone to Upton, another Dart site, where they have effectively occupied the field where Dart were, are, intending to get their bits in the ground. Um, I think it might be a little bit difficult right now because there's a burgeoning community taking up residence on that field. Now, for those people in the Northwest who had some concerns about going to Barton Moss because of the uh, police presence or the reports being put out of uh, um, intimidation by the protection community, here's an opportunity. Go along to Upton, meet the protectors, meet veteran protectors, meet people who are joining the community, meet people who are educating themselves on this abomination and understand what is about to be unleashed right across the whole of the northwest of England. So here's, here's some shots from the camp. We always stated, particularly during the eviction hearing, that the verge at Barton Moss Road would be returned to its former glory. Well, the undergrowth has been cleared. The straw that uh, was part of the bales that we were using for wind protection has been spread along there. And already the herbs that grow naturally in this area are returning. And in fact, um, only yesterday, after just 48 hours, some uh, comfrey was already coming through the, uh, uh, the straw there. Another person I want to acknowledge. Now, this is Sean, Sean Peatfield. Now, Sean wasn't arrested. Sean has contributed to the Barton Moss campaign. He has been a stalwart in terms of uh, his photography and the video videoing. And uh, Sean and uh, Steve, Dr. Steve, Steve Spy, uh, myself, have all submitted our video footage to the solicitors and anything that can be used to um, provide the evidence to show that it was not the protection community uh, intimidating the police, it was the other way around, and that most of those arrests were in fact illegal. And hopefully that will be used to good purpose. So Sean, he's also uh, the quartermaster, the camp quartermaster, and, uh, and the technical expert. And Sean, without you, then the camp would not have been the success that it has been. And I know that you will provide your support to other camps. Now on today, as I'm recording this program, there is another event up in Blackpool where there is a supply side conference for the embryonic shale gas industry. This is uh, an excellent opportunity to um, get some information as to who thinks they're going to provide support and supplies to this industry. And the three people there, Vanessa Vine, Tammy Samid and Anne Power, all uh, major players in the anti-fracking community. And in fact, uh, Vanessa and Anne 
are both up for awards right now uh, for the Guardian's Campaigner of the Year. So if you go to the Guardian website or simply search for Guardian Campaigner Awards, uh, you'll find the, uh, the page there and you can cast your vote accordingly. Well, we're going to go into a break in just a second. And after the break, you're going to watch the last walkout and watch Kevin Dunn. Kevin, who I mentioned at the start of the program, an absolute stalwart through this campaign. And in my opinion, Kevin absolutely epitomizes the people of this country who have done their research and are prepared to do whatever it takes to ensure that this industry does not get established. So thank you for joining me tonight and I look forward to seeing you next week. Wherever it is that you're living, monitor the planning applications, go to the FRAC OFF website, just search for FRAC OFF. And in fact, I'm just gonna pull up on the screen the um, front page of the FRAC OFF website. I think I have it here somewhere. Here we go. Coming up on the screen right now. This is the big picture. The Frackoff website is an outstanding resource. If you want to see what's going on in your area, if you want to get an update on progressions of planning applications in your area, go to this website. This is the, uh, uh, the big picture page. You can literally, no pun intended, drill down, take it into much greater detail, see who it is that's got the licenses in your area. Upcoming events, I'm going to be at Congleton Town Hall in, um, uh, where's that, Southeast Cheshire, uh, on Thursday. And um, Congleton is unfortunately covered by a Celtic Petroleum Exploration and Development License. And of course, the Chief Executive Officer of Celtic recently stated that those who object to the exploitation of shale gas and coal bed methane are unpatriotic. Well, let's see what the people of Congleton have to say about that. And hopefully we'll have a few people tripping down the M6 from Nutsford, which of course is George Osborne's constituency, which is nicely just outside of the Celtic license. So if you're in the uh, Cheshire, Staffordshire area next uh, Thursday, Thursday the 1st of May, come along to Congleton Town Hall for a 7.30 start. Thanks for joining me tonight. Here's the break and then the video of the final walkout. And I'll see you next week. Prepare for the return of the Alternative View Conference, AV5. Humanity versus Insanity, a conference that will make a difference. Featuring the most challenging and thought-provoking speakers from across the globe. Plus an extensive market with DVDs, books and other unique items. May the 16th to the 18th, 2014. Stavarton Park Hotel, Daventry, Northamptonshire. AV5, the alternative view. Book online at alternativeview.co.uk or call us on 0207 558 8869. This is uh, Ian R. Crane. It's day 140 of the Barton Moss campaign. And uh, what we have here is the last of the trucks coming out of the eye gas well site. So this is uh, a handful of camp protectors and a few members of the local community doing this token walkout. 
of the last of the trucks bringing out the porter cabins. But according to iGas, they're going to be back here in September. And uh, at that point, that's when they're going to want to frack this well. And so it becomes a whole new ball game. Look. So Kevin, you were pretty much here on day one. Yes. And uh, here you are walking what is probably the last convoy out on day 140. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So what, what's your thoughts? How's the uh, the campaign gone from your perspective? Well, I think the awareness on, on, on that side of things has absolutely been superb. The um, awareness has got out there now. And I think come September, when they try and go for a social license, they're going to be in for a big shock because people are going to be here and we're going to be stopping this completely. So basically we've got about another, what, uh, five and a half months or so yep, to up. raise awareness. Raise more awareness, yep. um, with, with more leaflet jobs, with, with more people knocking on doors, and getting more people on board with what's going on. Getting out, getting down to the to Swinton Town Hall, getting the Mayor more involved. Because uh, John Blamires, on, who's the Chief Operating Officer of iGas, uh, who was on the politics show yesterday, Basically, uh, so of course, gave the impression that um, you know they drilled the exploratory well, uh, they uh, found the gas, and uh, you know basically we're looking forward to getting the social license to be back here and get the well into production. Well, he's, he's going to be in for a bit of a shock because it's not going to go to the way the plan that the the, 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 um, the plan is not going to go to, to what he expects. He's going to be in for a big shock when he comes back in September. He's going to be finding a lot of people here who are going to stop this happening. Excellent. And um, your wife's normally with you, so Gaynor's not here today? No, Gaynor's, Gaynor's not well at the moment. She's not well, well okay. Your wife would have been here today on this footpath. Excellent. Well, give her, give her our regards. Will do, Ian. Okay. Good to see you. And Jeff, another local here. Hello. How are you? Hey, Jeff. Good to see you. And you. Hey, uh, yeah, again, you've you? been down here pretty much since day one. I certainly have. So here we are, day 140. Yes, yes. So where, where has the last five and a half months gone, huh? Uh, very quickly. We've got so much to do and little time to do it, but we've achieved our goal so far, haven't we? Well, there's a lot of um, awareness around the area. Yeah. I mean, when we when we first arrived here in uh, November, there was really not very much awareness. No, no. But now we have um, Frackery Earlham and Cadishead, yeah, yeah. Frackery Chawton, Frackery Tameside, beautiful, Frackery Bolton, yeah. Frackery Berry, Frackery yeah. Wig Wigan. Yeah, the, the maps fell in. So the uh, the level of awareness is increasing dramatically. It is, yes. So you know, we've got a message to the uh, the local population, or the because of course 64 percent of the country is basically yes, up yes. for grabs now. Just keep the good work up. You'll get there eventually. We're all witness and proof to it all, as you can see. The wagons are still here and so are us. And we will keep going so. So in September? In September. Looking forward to it. Yeah. And we're all here to win it, we're all here to stop it. That's what that's we the are. answer. That's the answer going today. Going forward, the answer is we're gonna stop this atrocity happening here at Barton Moss. Outstanding. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Kevin and Jeff, I think you both of you guys have managed to get through the campaign without being arrested. <laughs> Which is absolutely amazing. Yes. Why would that be in? I don't know, but yeah, amazing. Yeah. E excellent. Yeah, yeah, well, me too. Yes. <laughs> uh, Colin, you weren't quite so lucky. In fact, of course, um, <laughs> you got a hat trick. <laughs> you got a hat trick. Three arrests. Yeah, and I wasn't And of course, one, one illegal arrest where yeah. well, we caught them uh, bundling three, you into the back of a van. Three of illegal course. arrests. Three unlawful arrests. Three unlawful arrests. Well, one, and one, of course, yeah. in the back of the van extra, where they eventually let you go. Extra the extra one. Yeah. So, um, how have you found the hospitality of the Greater Manchester Police? Uh, oh, God. You know, well, we were told as soon as we landed, as you'd be well aware, Ian, um, that they did have a special reputation and that they were quite proud of that reputation. Um, at this point in time, I can confirm they've worked very hard to keep that reputation, um, if, if not to take it up a notch, for sure. Well, I, I'm told that um, the number of arrests is something around about 230 or so, uh, which I think is actually about 75 people. Uh, because many of them are, are multi-arrests. Yeah. I'm, I'm Mr. Average then. You're Mr. Average, yeah, you've got your you got, you got, you got, you got three point something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, and I, I think that, uh, you know, from my perspective, I would say that I'm very grateful to the Greater Manchester Police 
for providing us with the opportunity to get so much publicity. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Without the Greater Manchester Police, and particularly the TAU, yeah. thugs are us. Yeah. You know, we probably wouldn't have got quite yeah. so much uh, publicity sure. as we've actually got. For sure, it's that friction that has. Uh, yeah. Made I mean, fun. that's the tragedy, yeah. of course. Yeah. Because the mainstream media have uh, yeah. effectively put a blackout on this. That, um, yeah. Yeah. There are ways and means to get the word out without the yeah. mainstream media. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Colin, you're going to be back here in uh, September? Uh, who knows, that's a long way away, who knows where we'll be by then. I mean, my message for the local community, we're on, we're on the cusp of departing, really, it's fight for your lifetime. You know, this next six months, absolutely crucial that the word gets spread, that the council have the pressure come on them. Um, I guess we hear that they're, they're, they look forward to gaining their social licence. Well, you know, it's clear at the moment there's much more social licence for direct action or for people putting their bodies on this lane to stop it. It's the thing at the moment that has the social licence. I only expect that situation to be enhanced. Um, local people, it's crucial. Make a date now, September. It's very. It's looking more and more clear. All the normal systems of democracy, they're failing. They're failing woefully. I don't expect any change with that. So make a date for September. Get yourself down here. Fight for your lifetime. And uh, I mean, right now there are some 2,000 people camped out in uh, northern New South Wales. Yeah. Uh, because uh, the people of New South Wales have realised that the magnitude of the devastation that this industry has caused in Queensland um, is about to cross the border and they're yeah. determined to stop it. So yeah, hopefully we're going to see, yeah. well not just 2,000 but uh, even more down here if yeah. if they actually try and uh, get back in September. If they dare to frack. If they dare to frack. Although Andrew Austin apparently in a local uh, community meeting said that iGas would have to be crazy to want to come back to Barton Moss. <laughs> well, I think we know they're crazy anyway, because otherwise yeah, they wouldn't be yeah, trying yeah. to do this. So, yeah. No there dispute you go. around that. No, exactly. Addicts, addicts can't be reasonable. No, exactly. Yeah. So, you can see a handful of people here walking the trucks out on this last walk. Dan, you, you've been here pretty much the duration. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, how many arrests do you have under your belt? Uh, I have only the one arrest. Only the one arrest, and that was actually a trumped-up, contrived yeah, yeah, charge. That was, that was uh, a pretty, a pretty uh, ridiculous charge. It was obviously they arrested me on threats to kill charges. Uh, bailed me away for over a month from the site on those charges, and then and then dropped those and replaced them with public order section four. So. Uh, so they waiting. couldn't get you through the normal channels of no, um, no. Yeah. obstructing the highway or obstructing a police officer, so they had to cook something up. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. They, yeah, they cooked something up. They cooked something up right and proper. Um, but it fell through um, very quickly, I, 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 you know, and, and, they, and the CPS decided to change the charges. So at least, at least those charges uh, are not uh, over our heads anymore, but we've still got caught on the 28th for this yeah. month. So we'll just wait to see what happens then and uh, yeah, 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 continue. I mean, I was arrested three times uh, during last summer in the Balkan protests. Uh, every single one of those arrests has come to nothing. It was either no further action yeah. after release from the cells or it was uh, a letter sent to me saying that the case had been dropped. And I think that's what's going to happen in so many of these circumstances because it's clear that people are doing what is lawful and what is right. Um, and it's only a certain, you know, the police may uh, arrest us, brutalise us, but will the courts um, uphold that same position or, or, or will they will they do what they're supposed to do and deliver justice? Yeah. <laughs> meanwhile, we uh, keep working to get the word out. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, 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 we've got our entire community that's organising, that's united, that's strong, and it's a seriously, seriously formidable force. And I don't, I, I agree with Andrew Austin for the first time ever uh, in that I guess must be crazy to come back. Yeah. Uh, to Barton Moss and to deal with this community here now. This if they growing return, community. You know, yeah, yeah. The community is still growing and when we leave it will continue to grow. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the opposition in the community is 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 really is really strong and I don't think it's going to be uh, feasible for them to continue their operations. Here. Absolutely. A year on, a year on, by the time it comes to the next general election, it's been cut down. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're missing, Jackie, we're missing the TAU. Where, where, where are they? Where are they? It, yeah, the party's not complete without the TAU. Nice to
So is this the police against fracking? Because you've stopped. Yeah, what's going you're, on? You're blocking the convoy. We're not, we're not. We're, okay. We're right then. Because you're, you're, there's the vehicle to stop. All right so. then. You are now committing an offence of aggravated trespass. Why, why, why am I committing an offence? Because you're stopping them in the road waiting for these. No, you stopped. You're trespass. So if we can keep moving, gents and folks, that'd be absolutely. That'd be, that'd be fantastic. If, if you can't keep up, or you can't walk at a reasonable speed, which is determined by ourselves, no speed, just walk the line. All right. Thank you. That isn't reasonable enough. Why not? It's too slow. There's wagons here, there's people here that are trying to get around their normal days, they're trying to get to work, they're trying to go about their normal I like, business. I, feel like you, I, feel like I am singling you out. Like, yeah, you are singling me so, out. I, I, feel like, I, feel like, I feel like you're, um, you're intimidating me now. I just like to go I'm away. You. Well, yeah, it, it, is, it is intimidating. It's not an offence, it's not an offence. It is intimidation. Yeah, right, thank you for it's, saying well, that. It is, thank it's, you for that. You will be arrested, so thank you, if you thank want you. to take it as right, intimidation, well, right, okay, that'll be alright. Thank you. All right. Thank you for saying it's intimidation. So too slow. All right. Well, it's all right. It's, I'm, on a, I'm on a public footpath walking. Okay. I'm not doing anything well, wrong. We'll, we'll I'm, not I'm, not I'm not committing offence. I'm not committing offence. I'm not committing offence. I'd like you to know now. Well, you are committing offence. No, I'm not committing offence. Why is that? Because I'm walking on a public footpath and I've got the right over vehicles on a public footpath. I'm not slowing down. I'm walking the same pace. Video, Do not make a system issue. Well, you, whilst you, whilst you got a, if you feel like you want to arrest me, do it. Well, I will. Right, okay. What, well, whilst you got me, um, whilst you got me attention, why, why don't you tell me about the pros and cons of fracking? Because that's why you're here. So you tell me. You, 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 you can go. There is no, there is no, there is, there is no, there is no, there is no pros to fracking, is there? Well, can't you tell me? What's your, what's your environmental argument whilst I'm here? Really? No, what's, what's your environmental yeah. argument for it? I, well, I'm not here to. I'm not here. I'm here for that. Well, why I'm here, are you here? I'm here why to facilitate you here? yourselves. I'm here to facilitate. No, you're not. You're here to, you're here to facilitate well, the IGAS. Your, uh, you're here to, here to facilitate the IGAS convoy because that's exactly what well, many yeah, of the police have put in their statements that they are here yeah. to facilitate just, the IGAS just convoy. Just a little bit, bit away from okay. oh, Surprise, okay. surprise. It was all peaceful when I walked, yeah. when I left this march and walked up there, yeah. and I passed you on the way up the night. Oh, so I'm not slowing down, I'm walking the same face. Do not assault me, please. Do not assault me. Stop assaulting me. And you're right you're in the me. middle of it, ain't you, Keogh? You're just assaulting me here. I should have known. You just know. didn't need to touch me, please. Just you're stop so assaulting me. Stop 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 assaulting me. It's unreal. It's you're ridiculous. It's ridiculous. How did you get them two pips on your shoulder? How did you get them two pips on your shoulder? Thank you, folks. We'll keep moving along. That'd be great. So it's, I am, I am it's really predictable and expectable that it'd be you right walk, in the walk, middle walk, of it. And you've no right, like you've that. no right, you've no right to determine the speed that I have to walk down here on a public footpath. Yeah. And I've got the right over the vehicles by law. And a judge has come out and actually said we've got the law over the vehicles. Yes, he has. So what did he say? Said it's a public footpath. He said it's a public footpath. And the pedestrians have, I think, I think have the right of way. I think you'll find that that was a CPS submission. Who yeah. acquiesced? And yeah. rightfully so. You're, you're just what did they? That's what you're doing. You're assaulting me. I'm not assaulting you. Yes, you are actually. You're assaulting you me. Can someone just filmed me here assaulting me. You've got cameras. Stop assaulting me. Are you not famous enough? Are you not famous? Do you crave fame? Do you want your next YouTube hit? Is that what you're trying to do? What are you doing? Yours is good. What are you doing? You don't want to leave the peaceful way, do you? You just don't want to leave peacefully, do you? A good lad. A good lad. I think I'm ordering you, son. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Yeah, no worries. I think I'm a bit more wiser than you as well, and I've not I'm a bit more wiser than you. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. It's not blocking, is it? That's great. Is it blocking? Yeah. Is it sure? Yeah. Yeah. Like I knew it would be. Yeah, no. Yeah, it was just just trying to get me off the line. We know what it was. Tactical GMP tactics. Well, I have to say, these guys have absolutely excelled yep, absolutely. at giving us the uh, the publicity. Because without without them, no one you know, a walk a walk down, I know. no one's interested. But these guys show up. He's actually just said intimidation, Tindy. Ian. Yeah, I know. I, heard I, I he actually said. He actually said. said, actually said, said yes, it's his intimidation. It's intimidation. I actually said that. Thank yeah. you for the camera for that one. Yeah, I've got it on here as well. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be a good day in court if I get arrested. At least he hasn't asked you if you've been drinking. Oh no, I've not had that one yet, have I? <laughs> <laughs> Go, 
be slowing down. I'm not slowing down. If that's a pick my pace up, Thank actually. I pick my pace up. You. You'll be, you know, I've actually picked my pace up. There, no, we don't, fine. actually. There are a lot of other people that are trying to use this. Yeah, no, and I'm one of them. I'm one of them, my friend. I'm one of them. Well, there you go. Just everyone else is going. I've had a cup of tea. A cup of coffee. I've had another cup of tea. That's too Go on, tell me. Keep going, please. Stop making this an issue for yourself. Stop trying to make yourself a bit more. Thank you. This is just unbelievable. This is this is the infamous Sergeant, now Inspector Kehoe. Actually, trying to make a name for himself on the last you day. Investigation is it is. The last day of the I guess campaign here. Stop sticking your shells out on me. I was just trying to get into the TAU, I would think. Well, I don't know what he's trying to get into. He's trying to get into something with me. There's no need for it at all. There's no need for it. There's no need for it. She's just acting like a child. Acting like a child. Thank you. Didn't the um, chair of the IPCC say that, that she couldn't actually investigate anything? Like well, they're like, just like children in a, in, a, in a, like school bullies. Like school bullies, that's what you like. Yeah. No, I'm 55 years mean? old, I do not need you to touch you, to, to touch me, with your arms. I'm 55 years old, never broke the law, paid all my taxes all my life. I do not need you to bully me down a public footpath, which I've got the right to. So go away. Just the, go away. Uh, the no, we wasn't actually. But you've no, already yeah, said you're not interested. Yeah, you've already said you're not. No, you're not interested. You're not interested. You're not interested. That's a uh, nice discussion. This guy will still get paid. It's ridiculous what we're saying. You know, it's supposed to be facilitate. Do you know what the word facilitate? Do you know what the word facilitate means? You tell me. Well, facilitate means facilitating somebody. That's right. Right, you're facilitating the vehicles and you're facilitating us. That's right. Okay, so you could ask the vehicles to slow down a bit if you felt like I'm going too slow. Facilitate both sides, not just one side. That's right. Well, yes. that's what we're doing, isn't it? No, you're actually pushing me down here. Well, when I was spent up, that's great, though. Appreciate that. I don't, I don't know if there's any um, anything that's been a distraction for me. I think it's just purely uh, aggregate vehicle. Oops, sorry. I think there's, uh, oh, I didn't smell on it. No, you're right. Yeah. You just got to do your research. I have to do. Right. Obviously not, not good enough. Once them vehicles leave here, they're gone. It doesn't matter about all these buildings and what they're getting in and out. All they're interested in is I guess. Oh, I know, I know. And they know that and we know that. It's very clear. The, the police... I could, I could have, I'll lie down on here once once the vehicles have left. We don't care about these local businesses. The police here. statements no. you know what I'm categorically saying? state they're here to facilitate very the iGas convoy. Yep. It's exactly. very, very clear. Yep. Or as we say, I guess private army. I guess private army, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The tragedy is that if this industry does kick off, every one of the officers that has participated in this is culpable. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And there's no, I was just following orders. No. No. the police have logged some 670 people participating in this campaign. That's terrible. <laughs> Only 670 they say. <laughs> <laughs> 
apart from the thousands, of course, that came on the uh, yeah. the weekend marches. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think the complaints stack up quite right, Ian, do they? No. Well, I mean, let, let's face it. Chief Inspector Mark Roberts has a very casual relationship with that fundamental thing called truth. <laughs> because we've uh, we've asked him to provide the video evidence to support his allegations of. Um, Protectors intimidating police, and uh, funnily enough, funnily enough, none of the video evidence has been forthcoming. I mean, between the Greater Manchester Police and the Metropolitan Police, I think the reputation of the UK police is uh, probably about as low as it could possibly get. No, I'm not. Well, I'm walking at the same pace and you're walking into me in a police step. Yeah, but your, your job is to gather evidence. Your job is not to facilitate... You know what my job is here? It's gather evidence. Well, I'm a police officer first and I don't have to second. Oh, when you see no, this one here, no, it's you, have, you have you upheld what? your role. You know what, you you've upheld yeah, your role yeah, throughout the campaign. No, so why all of no, a sudden not my argument. you want to get in the front that's line? That's not my argument. He just said he's a police officer first. When I've tried to put complaints into the police on the part of Moss and said, no, it's the police that you can't do it here. You've got to go to Swinton Police Station. Are you not a police officer? You can't do it here. I can't take a complaint. Right, there you go. There you go. So you're, you're so not really, really a police so you're not, officer. So you're not really a police gatherer. officer, are you? You're a gatherer. It's not a police officer as a constable it's, can't take a complaint. It's, it's arguing that you have at the moment. I mean, no, it's just facts. It's just facts. It's just. No, it's not. It is. That's great, that. Just. You shouldn't say things if you can't back them up. Purely, no, it's, it's not. It's purely antagonistic towards the police. <laughs> oh, the my God. Antagonistic. Ant yeah. uh, we, we have hours of footage yeah, I'll say that of antagonism. Yes. Yes. We, we, we have footage so coming out of so yeah. loads of that. Unbelievable. Yeah, we've got hours of footage of people goading police officers, no, etc. So we can compare footage at court, perhaps. But the police, I suppose, have the capability well. to deal with that. What we've seen, what we've seen we're human yeah, beings yeah, too, I think, as yeah, yeah. some lady said. But you haven't behaved yeah, like... The, the, the Greater Manchester Police, and particularly really the TAU, good. have well, not yeah. behaved like human beings. Good, there are individuals that have, really but collectively, the Greater Manchester Police and the TAU have behaved like absolute thugs. Yep, absolutely. Bullies. Yeah. Oh. I mean, once the earpiece goes in the ear, so all humanity just disappears, doesn't it? Disappear, it? Because you're basically well, look, at well, look at this here. Look at this here. Well, your choice is. You can <laughs> right. Well, that's your choice. You can back off. Right. Hey. You can back off. Can you stop trying to stop me? No, no, no. Just stop walking into my space. You're walking to my space. Have you thought of that one? Thank you, very much. you can always walk past me and repass. Well, these lorries are not to go past you as well, but I'm sure you won't go to the edge, will you? Oh. Is that a no? Yeah, I thought not. That's your arm first. Uh, we don't want to speed up the poisoning of the planet. Forgive us, sorry. I thought the 2020 agreement was all about that. Is that not the case, Ian? What's that? The 2020 agreement. What, the, the 2020 the agreement. What 2020 health? agreement? By 2020, they've got to reduce carbon emissions by 20%. Is that not? What, this is going to reduce carbon emissions? Oh, yeah. You have not done your No, not job. this. When it, they'll they'll say what it, whatever they think they have to say to be able to do what they want to do. To make money. Because that's the bottom line. Pensions are at stake money, money, as well. Money, 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 Don't forget that. Pensions are at stake. <laughs> I'm told that in the press today that uh, the job's been yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Privatising, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's coming. Well, they're welcome to some company in the service. Yes. <laughs> if anyone take this office and get paid yeah, for it. Yeah, very welcome to do that. Very welcome. They might have a bit more empathy as well, Ian. Yeah. The new lot. Oh, so it's, it's a good thing then. Empathy? No, no. It's yeah, empathy is very good. Well, what I've seen in the GMP on the last five oh, months, so. I've not been impressed with the lies I've seen and the brutality. Would I trust a GMP police officer now? Not a chance. Would I support the police now? Not a chance. Would I report crime if I saw it? Not a chance. Would I have done it six months ago? Would I have done it six months ago? Yes.
Unfortunately, GMP are corrupt. Why is that? Every, well, you tell me, because everybody's investigating you. Yeah? Why are they corrupt, you tell me? Because you don't do your job, because, because you don't do your job right. You just cover things up. Do you want to mention Hillsborough? Hillsborough, which force was that? Was it Gen I think there's a few forces there, wasn't there? No. Not to mention the Peterloo Massacre Yeah, well, but they have a problem. The GMP have a real problem because that flare incident allegedly occurred in the early hours of Saturday morning. But it took how long? How well, hang on a second, because one of the Greater Manchester Police told me on the Friday morning <laughs> that there'd been a report of a flare being fired at a police helicopter. And my response, and I quote, is that's a crock and you know it. Yeah. And consequently, consequently, we are never going to hear any more about that incident. Because, guess what? My camera was rolling. <laughs> so, we have it on video that the flare incident <coughs> allegedly occurred on the early hours of Friday morning, yet the official story is that it occurred on the early hours of Saturday morning. So, somebody let the cat out of the bag a little bit too soon. I wonder who that could have been. I wonder. Well, this is an interesting one. GMP, 20 deaths in the last 11 years. The yeah. highest death rate of yeah. any police force in, in the country. Yeah, in the custody. I didn't know that. Yeah. There's been That's two just right. recently. Two just recently in custody. So, here we are. Monday, April well, 14th, I guess. Last track of days. And here we are, right at the end of Barton Moss Road. The last of the convoy is coming out and uh, Inspector Kehoe, he of the false accusation of drink driving, is given the task of escorting the convoy. Folks, if you could just go around to the right hand side, that would be uh, appreciated. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> You can, well, you couldn't stay away from the party. We're all going home. You couldn't stay away from the party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you missed us. <laughs> Finish? Huh? I say, I told you they couldn't stay away from the party, couldn't they? Yeah? Let me see if I can get that sort of response next time. There you go. And look at that. Must be, must be telepathy. Oh. Gonna get laid off. I'm back to that. <laughs> back to what? No, 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 Back no. to my bread and butter. That's what yeah. I do. Yeah. Private. You missed it? Pardon? You missed it? No, because I've been going back every week. Yeah, I've been working the weekends back at back where I work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what? How do you think it's gone, Lee? How do you think the whole thing has gone? 
You don't have a view? I would love to give you an honest <laughs> view. It's a policing operation. The part that we've played as police liaison has been a bit groundbreaking for us because it's been new to us. <laughs> but I, I, I feel that we've done we've done okay as police liaison. Uh, and I'm not in a, in a position to comment about the whole operation because I've not, I've not had a view of everything. But our part, I hope, we've... Uh, We've acquitted ourselves well. We've certainly got got a lot of links with the protesters, genuine links. You know, not just business links. But we're yeah. yeah. For speaking to him. Like yourself, you know, a nice guy. And we know where you're coming from. You're passionate. So keep, you know, keep it up. Keep it up. I won't ask you to comment on the good, TAU. Good, good luck. I have no comment about that, obviously. <laughs> you just answered the question for me. Thank no, you. no, no. <laughs> Appreciate All it. The best Thanks. All the best. Take care. Any comments, Andy? How do you think it's gone? Oh, uh, what, today? <laughs> <laughs> this is day 140, and you've been here for about 120 of them. No, we are yeah. not about 50. <laughs> <laughs> no, just uh, nice to meet some of you. Uh, we'll see you again. I'm sure of that. <laughs> Although I hope not, but not, you know, not, I mean that in the uh, yeah, even if it's nicest here, possible sense. Somewhere else and uh, take care of yourself. So, no final comments about the TAU? No final comments about the TAU. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be the rest of the week? <laughs> Introducing the magazine for free thinkers. 100 pages of high quality colour print. Packed with information the mainstream media will never tell you. Published quarterly covering a range of subjects including politics, history, science and technology. Uncensored magazine. Think for yourself. Back issues also available on CD-ROM in PDF format. To subscribe, visit worldwideweb.uncensoredmag.co.uk or call us on 0207 558 8869. This is Ian R. Crane. It's day 149 of the Barton Moss campaign. It's actually 149 days since the first convoy came into Barton Moss Road delivering infrastructure to the iGas well site just about half a mile away from here. It's nine days since the last convoy left the well site. So iGas have drilled their 10,500 feet exploratory well. They've now taken the samples to be analysed and they're letting it be known in their closed community meetings that they intend to be back here sometime around late September. As you can see from the view here behind me, the Barton Moss Protection Community Camp has moved on exactly as they always said they would once IGAS had finished their work here. So people have gone to various other locations right now, to Danes Hill in Nottinghamshire, where Dart Energy are uh, drilling an exploratory well over on the eastern side of the country, or to Upton. Now the Upton camp is a preemptive strike, where the uh, protection community have established a presence in a location where Dart intend to drill at some future date. So obviously they're not going to be getting there anytime soon as they're going to have to go through an eviction process to remove that camp. Just as Peel Holdings tried to do here on Barton Moss. Back in February, I think that uh, Peel Holdings probably succumbed to the pressure from one of their tenants, otherwise known as IGAS. And despite the fact that the protection community had been here for close on three months, Peel Holdings served eviction papers on the protection community and obviously anticipated that it would simply be a rubber stamping exercise and that the 
camp would either leave immediately uh, with the threat of a, a court hearing or once the judge had rubber stamped their eviction order then the camp could be evicted by Sher Group's bailiffs as otherwise known as the protector removal team but uh, it didn't quite work out as Peel and IGAS had intended thanks to some tremendous legal counsel from Lee Day and uh, um, the barrister Lindsay Johnson Peel were rebuffed and uh, despite the fact that the judge ruled that the camp should be evicted then once it went to the appeal court the appeal court ruled that there was indeed a case to hear consequently the appeal hearing has been scheduled for uh, July 16th which is some three months from now well the reality is that Peel have a decision to make now as do I guess of course whether or not those uh, proceedings continue or whether they simply withdraw. Meanwhile, six months or so until IGAS threaten to return. No doubt that Peel Holdings will try to do something with this verge to try and ensure that the community protection camp cannot return. But this is just one piece of land on all of the moss. The protection community is nothing if not creative. So consequently, it doesn't really matter what Peel Holdings try and do. The protection community will be back here the moment that IGAS think that they're going to get their bits back in the ground. Because when they do return, they are going to be here to frack. Whether they call it an acid frack, a mini frack, an acid etch, doesn't really matter. It's all semantics. The reality is that they will be wanting to frack. And at that point, the whole game changes so just as the community protection camp has been here primarily to raise awareness in the local community something that it has had tremendous success in doing the level of awareness in the immediate surrounds was fairly minimal when the camp arrived today there are frack free groups in Earlham and Caddishead in Chorton in Walkden in Tameside in Bury, in Bolton and springing up all over the place so the reality is that the level of awareness has grown exponentially in the 149 days since this campaign kicked off. So that will continue. So when IGAS do return to Barton Moss Road, or even if they think they can build entry and exit routes on and off the M62, as I said, creativity will come into play. Meanwhile, of course, David Cameron is determined to make protest illegal just has been as has been done in uh, Victoria in uh, Australia and of course he's also planning on introducing legislation which will make it impossible for people to raise any kind of legal objection to the mother frackers drilling under their property this is a campaign that has to be absolutely nailed in the next 13 months before the next general election we have to ensure that all parties understand that fracking in the UK will not be tolerated by the population of this country. It's an abomination which covers the entire social, political, philosophical and religious spectrum. 64% of this country is potentially going to be targeted by the fracking industry. It will, in the space of a generation, turn much of, particularly the northwest of England, the Boland Shale, into an industrial wasteland. If we don't stop this, we will be condemning future generations to lives of absolute abject misery. So this is Ian Crane on day 149 of the Barton Moss campaign, heading back south, but I'll be back here just as soon as I guess state that they're coming back to try and get their bits in the ground. Watch this space.